Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial, my name is Attempster. Today I'm going to be going over part 5 in the Project AI tutorial series. So in the last part we went ahead and did some more bug fixes as well as getting enemy movement going and I think adding a couple states as well. In the last tutorial we also went ahead and added our enemy rig uh, with the sensors and all the animations and everything. So if you haven't already, be sure to go ahead and check out that tutorial so you'll be up to date. But apart from that, I'll get straight on into this tutorial. So what we're going to be doing is first of all, I'm going to be selecting the main AI controller here. I'm going to move this up like so and move this one across. Now last time what we did is we went ahead and we set up our enemy status here on a tap to then go ahead and activate a duck animation. Now what we actually want to do is first of all before we do any of that go over here to the find cover script and you'll notice that we've put this in here however just to ensure that this runs well what I'm going to do is uh, get rid of the indentation so press delete four times one, two, three, four, and so that will just evaluate regardless of this. Now the second thing we have to do is also go ahead and instead of using a logic brick, we want to activate the duck animation through a Python script. You'll notice that the animations for enemy AI are fairly glitchy, especially with states and priorities and everything all over the place. So the easiest way to do it is, uh, like here, just to activate it through the Python script. So what we're going to do is go over to our set position script. And in here, let's go ahead and import in duck. So cmt.actuators uh, duck. Now what we have to do is over here in our set position script, uh, the same one we need to join duck in there like so and now we can get rid of that rename this something and rename this something and delete it cool so yeah that should be that working also what I'm going to do is you'll notice on state 2 over here we have uh, uh, constantly playing the forward walk animation so to make sure this goes smoothly, uh, this forward walk here, I'm going to set to a priority of 2. Then I'm going to go back to state 1. I'm going to go down all the way to run and set that to a priority of 1. Uh, we spelt this wrong, so actuators. And then also we need to activate it. So we haven't actually done that yet. So let's go over here. Cont.activate duck. All right. Try it out one more time. Maybe we'll move them closer. Cool, so there we go. That is that working. Now what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and add another state. This is going to be when the enemy is behind the cover. And basically, yeah, that's when he's going to be going up and down and shooting at the play and reloading and stuff. So let's go ahead, uh, get rid of that one get rid of that one. So let's add an always on a true pulse uh, property. Go over here and choose add and now we need a timer property. So let's go ahead add a timer. Uh, it's going to be an integer. Go and add timer minus one. Now also when timer is equal to zero then what we want to do is reassign it back to the original amount. So and here assign timer to however long we want. So I'm just going to make it 10 seconds, so 600. Um, at 60 frames a second, that's roughly 10 seconds. So let's go ahead and minimize all of those. So now we have, we should just have a timer going by itself. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to move the not safe script. I'm going to move that over to here. Now what we can just do is go over here and choose state three. So now that will move across and uh, it should be over here. Great, so now what we also need to do is go ahead and move this property here uh, with the tracking to the player. We need to move that over to this layer as well. Let's go ahead and set to state three. Now one more thing we will do is select this one and select that one uh, uh, because we want to sort of copy this over so the player can take damage when he's in state three. So add an and. Join that one to there and this one to there. Let's move them down like so. Now what we also want to do is we want to go over here and set not safe. Now on here what we want to do is set the state back to state 1 so we can find some new cover to go to. 
So let's go ahead and add a state here. And so I guess we can just add an AND controller here and join the two together like that. So it gets set back to state one. Uh, I think that is like the basics of that state done. Now what we want to do is our player, depending on the timer, we want the player to sort of bob up and down, shoot at the player, reload, and all of that stuff. So first of all, I think what I might do from frame zero to frame 60, uh, we'll just have him idle down there. So let's change uh, to the dope sheet over here. Select the enemy rig. Uh, so Z to go into wireframe, select it scroll along and go over here now let's go over to enemy crouch idle so this is when it will just be sitting there waiting uh, for something to happen so what we want to do is go ahead and play that animation alright so let's go over here and choose text editor uh, and let's make a new one so let's just call this uh, shoot enemy or maybe enemy shoot enemy shoot dot py um, we can go back to another one, scroll up to the top, and just copy and paste this so we don't have to write it out again. Go ahead and check the values for the timer. So timer is equal to own, uh, whoops, timer. And then what we want to do is join in the correct animations that we want. So state 3, uh, and let's go ahead and add our Python here. So Python scripts and enemy shoot and then let's also continuously evaluate that alright and the first one we want is crouch idle over here alright and so let's import it here uh, idle c is equal to cmt dot actuators tos, and crouch idle cool so next line let's go ahead and to our timer property which we have going down the bottom here. Instead of adding minus one, let's just add one. Uh, that'll make it a little easier. So down here, what we need to do is um, assign timer back to zero. And we need to, up here where it's checking, we need to timer is equal to 600. So this here, we really only want to evaluate once. So if idle, C is equal to 1, cmt dot uh, activate idle C. Now this here uh, is going to be timer, not idle C. Now one more thing we need is for him to sort of stand up. So basically what we can do is I think we need to add one more action and that is, uh, I guess just get up and we'll call this uh, use enemy duck and just reverse the animation. So frame 20 to frame zero. So now what we want to do is go over to state three, uh, maybe zoom out a bit, and we want to join get up here to our Python. So this one down here. So get up is equal to cmt dot actuators get up. Uh, and then else if timer is equal to I guess just 60. Now you'll notice the animation here is for 120 frames. So depending on whether you want to use all of those, uh, you can set it to 60 or 120. So maybe we'll just do the full 120. Uh, colon cmt dot deactivate deactivate idle c and cmt dot activate get up okay so that's going to take another 20 frames on top of that also if timer is equal to 140 then what we want to do is cmt dot deactivate uh, get up and we want to activate the aim animation so enemy aim here which is another 20 frames so let's go over here uh, join that in and then cmt dot activate so this here is going to be activate and let's go ahead and import in here so aim is equal to cmt dot actuators and enemy aim cool so that one in there cmt dot activates aim 
else if timer is equal to 160 and uh, now's when we sort of want him to start shooting all right and so in here will sort of be a period of time where our ai will just go ahead and sort of shoot randomly whenever he feels like it so let's go ahead over here add ourselves a random set the true pulse to maybe yeah i guess around 14 or something random seed and then join that in there to our enemy shoot so let's go ahead and import it in random uh, boolean is equal to cnt.sensors random so now what we want to do if the timer is greater than 160 and random boolean dot positive then what we want to do is go ahead and play a shooting animation so let's go ahead and import in shoot cmt.actuators so all right and let's go ahead and join it up so move this up and in here shoot now what you also might want to do is add a ammo property so let's go ahead and just quickly do that ammo and that can be an integer let's just set it to 10 for now and then if this evaluates true then we want to first of all uh, own ammo minus what is equal to 1 so we also have to check whether and own ammo is greater than 0 what we also need him to do is play the shooting animation so cnt.activate shoot so what I need to do is select the rig here we're gonna go and add an actuator and check that shoot so this one if we keep going shoot has finished playing so inverted when it's not activated then we want to join that in there as well so shoot activate let's just make it shoot act uh, and import that in shoot act is equal to cnt.actuators shoot act cool and then now what we're going to do uh, add another one and shoot act dot positive so it's not being played because we've inverted it we also need to shoot a ray we should be able just to do that from the weapon itself so let's go ahead and add a ray now this here is going to be I guess just on the z axes negative z on a range of probably 100 I guess it can just collide with anything so let's go ahead hold down shift uh, and join it in here let's call it bullet uh, and import it in here bullet is equal to cnt.actuators bullets if bullet dot positive and then within that if bullets dot hit object is equal to the name of our player in so uh, yeah just player I guess player so if it hits the player then what we want to do is own dot uh, send message uh, hit and then the body which is nothing really and then we want to send it to player oops player so later what we can also do is go ahead and add in bullet impacts if it hits anything other than the player. So on state 2 here, uh, if we move this upwards, we have an edit object here to track to the player. So we want to uh, select that on, go over to this layer here and we want to activate it as well. So we also want the enemy rig to track to the player. Else if, and then let's make it the last few frames. So else if timer is greater than 300 uh, we want to cnt dot activate duck activate duck uh, so we need to add that in as well so let's move this up uh, state 3 and join duck in which isn't there so let's go to state 1 select duck a uh, state and join it in like so all right, import it in here. Duck is equal to cnt.actuators. Duck cnt.deactivate shoot, and then also 
lsurf timer is greater than 400. Now one more thing before I continue is we need this to be within a range. So this will evaluate at the moment at the same time as this and this uh, because we have no boundaries. So let's put one more and timer is less than or equal to 300. And then here and timer is less than or equal to 400. All right, and over here and timer is less than and equal to, oops, and however long the reload animation is, because that's what we want to activate next. So let's move this up. Uh, reload here is 120. So again, join that in there and move it across, move this down. And so 520, cmt.activate reload, cmt.deactivate. Uh, duck. All right, and actually, let's swap these around. Now, next part. Uh, if timer is greater than 520, so if timer is greater than 520, colon next line cmt dot deactivate reload and cmt dot activate so idle c. Right, so idle C is 120 frames from what I last remembered. So 640, which means we're going to have to change uh, this here to 640 instead. So now you'll notice that the magazine here uh, has its own animation. So we need to also play that at the same time. So hold down shift, select the enemy, uh, move it up, and we need to join it in. So mouse in this window, control and up arrow. Join this one into magazine, control down arrow, and in here, cmt dot activate magazine. And in here, cmt dot deactivate dot deactivate uh, magazine. Cool, so I think that should be most of that working. Let's go ahead and quickly import it in. Is equal to cmt dot uh, actuators magazine. So what we want to do is over here on state 1, let's go ahead and add a state uh, and change it to state 3. And then what we're going to do is uh, go over here, add ourselves a property and check whether enemy status is equal to 1 and if it is then we'll switch to state 3. So this here is actually a sensor, so cnt.sensors. So this here we'll rename as sensors, uh, just like shooting actuator. Then what we're going to do is down the bottom here import in reload which is equal to cnt.actuators uh, reload. Cool, so there you go guys, that's the end of this tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you didn't, let me know with a like, comment or share down below. All of that stuff would be greatly appreciated. Next tutorial we'll continue with the animations, probably finish them off and maybe add some other things like muzzle flare and stuff. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it, have an awesome week and I'll see you guys in the next video.